You're watching The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. Hey, welcome to today's show. You know, every now and then somebody special comes along in your life, and I'll tell you, today's show is a tribute to this special person called Red Breffitt. He's from Elliott Lake, and I'll tell you, we had some great fond memories on our fishing trips. Today's show is a tribute to Red. Coming up. Sometimes in life, you have the privilege of meeting someone who leaves a lasting imprint on your heart. Malcolm Red Griffith was such an individual. On today's show, Bob Wayne and a few friends head to Elliott Lake in northern Ontario to fish for lake trout and bass. While there, the boys met up with a few of Red's old pals and reminisced about a man who enjoyed every minute of life to the fullest, whether he was fishing, hunting, running his tackle store, or even volunteering. This special episode of Real Fishing, we dedicate to a great friend and true ambassador, Red Griffith. Here comes. Can you oh. see the size of Could be a world record. <laughs> you got to love it. Whew. All right. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. man. Way to size that one. Oh, there you got it. Yeah. That is so cool. Oh, yeah. That is a monster. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty cool. Oh, oh, oh. oh I got one! A Slavosaurus! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Man, that's a good fit. Oh, yeah, a good one. Whoa! Here he comes. Yeah! Wow, <laughs> look at that. This is what? Don't be sick. This is all about right there. 16 pounds. Now look at there. Real Fishing is sponsored by... Chevy Trucks, Ontario, more to discover, and Tim Hortons. Hey folks, that's what I call real fishing. clear that is. Yeah, there's lots of fish down there. Is this the only bluff on the lake? Yeah, but it's uh, pretty high per Oh yeah, there's a fish at 39. Well, he broke the ice, Adrian. No, 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 the one in the boathouse did. We didn't Bro even get out. Oh yeah, that's it. There are a couple in the boathouse. We're up here on... Uh, Quirk Lake, which is uh, just outside of the city of Elliott Lake. And I'm here with my brother Wayne and Adrian Rushforth with uh, Mercury Marine Canada. And we're just out for a little Monday fishing. I think Adrian, Shh, don't tell the officer. <laughs> Adrian summed it up a few minutes ago. All these Mondays can be tough on you, especially when you're in the shade because it's about 85 degrees out there on the lake. <laughs> we got some uh, friends and uh, our guide is way out offshore trolling for lake trout. I'm sure Red's laughing at us right now, <laughs> saying those guys don't know what they're doing, because he was the resident pro. That's right, yeah. All he had to yeah. do was ask him, and if he didn't know the answer, he'd fabricate it. Peregrine no. way? Might be. They're small. I can't. Bob, this one hit into the boat. 100 and, I don't know, well, well over 120 anyways. So... What is it? It's got to be a lake, right? The birds are protesting yeah, up there. I know. They don't like Monday morning. What are those? Peregrines? Or? Oh, boy. I'm going to sore wrist here. Shaking his head. Oh. Broke off? Broke the line. Our guide, Marty Decato, Wayne Wilcox, and my neighbor, Mark Alford, with the nice hat. We're doing some trolling for some lake trout, and we're having some pretty good success. Wow. 
boys, here's a hit. Getting a bite, Bob? Yeah, on the Lindy rig. There we go. He's on the board finally, eh? Oh, he's coming up. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> <An old> athletic jumper. <laughs> that is some clear water down there, guys. Yeah, you can see down like 30 feet plus. Just went to light line and Lindy rig and a straight middle for this flat, flat water we got. This is tough condition for for fishing when you got a clear water lake and uh, clear water lake. These are kind of days. No wind. When you just hope that the breeze comes up, and if you get a breeze and it's dead calm, and all of a sudden the action will start, you know. But when it's dead flat. Generally, so are the fish. Okay. Well, that didn't take long, that little Lindy, right? They sure broke the mold when they made Red Breffitt. He was definitely one of a kind. What I liked about him is he always had a smile on his face and was always playing practical jokes. When we got together for a fishing trip, we always had fun. Another day, another adventure. Oh, Robert, where were we off to today, Robert? Here, Bobby, do you want the rod, Bobby? <laughs> Show the folks back home, I would say. Would you like to bring them in, Bobby? You keep messing around, you're going to lose your only fish of the year. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Man, Red Eye, miss you right now. You probably want to get some of these minnows, but they're probably some sort of horror story like, you know, dropping your minnow traps or doing this or doing that. There was always a story with red, and it was always a good one. Well, like I said, it'd be an adventure. More memorable moments fishing with Red Griffith from Elliott Lake coming up. Closed captioning is brought to you by FNCC and BoaterExam.com. You're watching The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. Canada's jewel in the wilderness. Elliott Lake, Ontario, located just six hours north of Toronto, is home to just over 12,000 residents, and that's something for everyone. It's quite a bustling uh, community of uh, a combination of retirees and uh, a lot of tourists now and younger families are moving up for the cottage lot project that we have and are enjoying the outdoors. Uh, five minutes from town you could be completely secluded in nature or you could stay in town and, and catch a movie at our local movie theater or you know, go to any of our restaurants. Whether you're an outdoor enthusiast or you enjoy time indoors, this place has it all. From breathtaking scenery and hidden beaches to 4,000 lakes within a 50 mile radius of the city offering more than eight different species of fish for angling enthusiasts. A lot of lake trout lakes, the pristine uh, spring-fed lake trout lakes, uh, tons of smallmouth bass, there's a lot of walleye, uh, northern pike, uh, speckled trout, uh, brook trout in, in lakes or in rivers. Uh, basically any kind of fish you, you, you want, we can get it here within, within 10 minutes. A constantly growing city, Elliott Lake is home to a new 7,000-yard, 18-hole championship golf course, as well as the new lakeshore properties being offered along the pristine waterfront. We have 400 cottage lots on 10 lakes within the municipal boundaries here. They've all been pre-selected in terms of uh, the abilities of the lakes themselves to sustain cottage lot development. Very unique project uh, in the sense that it's a, a cooperative effort between the city, the MNR, and uh, our business here in, in the sense of uh, uh, developing and uh, marketing. Well, boys, we've got late in the day. It's been hot all day. The fish should be down there. They should be turning on. we got a chop on the water. We have zero excuses not catch fish tonight. That's what I like, positive thinking. you got to have the right attitude. Successful scrolling <laughs> requires a good <laughs> attitude. Actually, there's other fish there. 72. Must be a, a really good spot there. 
Once again, Marty and the gang hooked into another Quirk Lake Laker. What's amazing is that we were the only two boats on the water. Talk about underfished. job to catch him. This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman. I'm here with Robert Dupel and he's with FNCC. What's FNC stand for? Well, it's Forensic and Nautical Consultants of Canada, Bob. Now, people are getting these cards and there um, some people that don't have them are wondering, the, the Pleasure Craft Operator card. What is mandatory right now as we speak? Who needs this card? Well, basically, Bob, right now, every Canadian that's under the age of 23 must have the operator card. Anyone that drives a personal watercraft also needs it. And if your boat's under four meters, you need the card right now. In 2009, 15th of September, all Canadians must have the card. Okay, so here's the deal. Why wait till it's mandatory? If you're into boating like we are, get the card now and save the mad rush at the end. Red was sort of one of the uh, gems of Elliott Lake. You might say the treasures. He was uh, a real icon in our community. He was a uh, small businessman in Elliott Lake who uh, took a real interest in all aspects of the life of our community. There's more Quirk Lake fishing action still to come, and later, recalling fond memories of a man who always put Elliott Lake first. Stay tuned. You keep messing around, you're going to lose your only fish of the year. <laughs> Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. In the world of angling, brook trout hold a special mystique. With spectacular coloration and a need for absolutely pure water, they are a true symbol of the wilderness. At one time, giant fish turned up throughout their native range east of the Rockies. These days it means a pilgrimage to places like the Nipigon, Mistocity, or Hayes. But even here, the very largest are gone forever. Truth is, there were never more than a small handful of exceptional fish. Harvested for trophies, the genetics were lost. Now you see a greater number of fish, but they're smaller. When visiting a fly-in operation, talk your guide into the most remote location possible. Never been fished means you've got a shot at a monster like this. But remember, it isn't a numbers game, and it never was. Unlike brookies elsewhere, these northern fish are really affected by the weather. Low pressure systems and cold fronts shut them down. The best times are during prolonged high pressure. As for tackle, keep it simple with a selection of crankbaits, spinners, and jigs. Better still, bring along a fly rod. The best lodges operate on a fly fishing only catch and release basis. When you do land your trophy, take photos and measurements. Then realize you have in your hands a rare living treasure, irreplaceable in today's world.
not often that I put myself in the back of the boat, but you know what? I really feel sorry for these two guys. So I'm just fishing back here, looking for scraps. And the violin will start playing any time now, folks. He's having a tough day. Now, let's leave him alone in the back of the boat, okay? <laughs> you know, this fishing stuff is really hard. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> yeah, quick. Quick like a bunny. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Beauty. Yes. Be careful. Just nice and easy. Gently, gently, gently. <laughs> oh. gently. <laughs> hey, that's, that's got shoulders on it, Adrian. Yeah. yeah. Look at that. Whoa. Don't break it. Don't break it. Don't break it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at there. What a beauty wow. to start the morning off, eh? Whew. Wow. Just what? took that yum too, Ben. Way to go, yeah. Adrian. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you. You are a professional. Now, I know that you just took up fishing, right? That's right. Last few years. Yeah. Look at how fat that thing is. Woo. Uh, I can see the boys are running out there. Now, they're fishing lake trout out here in Quirk Lake. We decided this morning, this is our uh, second morning up here, and, uh, you know, we unfortunately only have about an hour to fish. And this is the result. Now, I'm sure they're catching Lakers out there, which just shows you. It's a catch and release only lake, isn't yeah, it, guys? That is a fatty. That's close to four pounds. It's heavy, isn't it, Bob? Yeah, very heavy. Maybe over four. Look at that. Okay. See you later, guys. Nice. Very nice. Good stuff. What way to break the ice. Red was a very good friend of myself and Peter's, and we were with him right to the end. This plaque here represents the coast-to-coast -coast fishing derby that started about 1980. And Red came aboard about the year 1999. He's going to show all us freshwater people how to fish, because he's a saltwater newfie, he says. And he emphasizes that. So we go to a little lake called W Lake. Towards the end of the day, he struck onto a pretty good lake trout, and I landed for him. He would never have had it. But it was about eight pounds, and we come in. By then, the day's over, and we have four miles to go to camp. Everyone's hungry. I said, I'll cook that fish. He sliced it all up very, very, very thin and laid it on a rock. And the sun did come out a little bit. He put a little soy sauce on half an hour later. He said, this is sushi, and it's ready. <laughs> and we ate it, <laughs> along with a little beer and a few things to wash it down. But that was red for you. Anytime Red tells you a story, never ever believe him because uh, he's got a thousand stories that only about maybe 10% of them were true. And uh, he, he liked to play jokes on people. He was a he was a he was a great jokester. And uh, I know one time we were again out in the North Channel. We were going to go fishing or salmon fishing out in the North Channel. And he has a little 14-foot boat away out on Lake Huron, which we had no business being out there in, the, in such a small boat. But we were going out anyway and. Uh, we were traveling across the uh, lake at uh, full speed and uh, 20 miles from either shoreline and all of a sudden the boat stops dead in the water and the engine starts racing. And I say, oh my goodness, what has happened now? So Red turns to me and I turn to Red and I say, what's wrong, Red? Well, he says, Bye. He says I think we've lost the prop. I say, oh, start looking around for a paddle. Well, if you know Red, you heard for sure you know that, they're, uh, that Red never carried any survival gear or paddles or anything like that that he, he was positive he would never need anyway, even though the motor was 30 years old. So he kept me stewing like that for about oh, 20 minutes or half an hour, and I'm wondering how we're going to get out of there. And finally he just turns over and he starts the motor up and puts it back in gear, and he says he'd slipped it out of gear for me when I wasn't looking. And <laughs> so we were... So he got me good on that one for sure. Fishing with my old buddy, Red Breffitt. Remembering Red Breffitt continues in a moment, right here on Real Fishing. You're watching The Real Fishing Show with Bob Azumi. All right, Marty's got a good one on way. <laughs> yeah, all right. <laughs> all in the boat around. Yeah, it is pulling his boat. Look at, Look at the boat. two tourists with him. They got their camera <laughs> Yeah, <ready>. that's right. <laughs> nice fish. On a rebel. A rebel. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Red was one of those guys that you instantly liked. He was genuine, salt of the earth, and when he said it, his word was gold. And I'll tell you, we used to have so much fun on those fishing trips, there was never a dull moment. Good stop, Robert. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm tired of you. <laughs> what are you doing, knitting that shit? <laughs> he was the greatest asset this town has ever seen. He was my friend, my best friend for for 20 years, and he was the greatest asset this town has ever seen. He was a tireless booster of the municipality and. Uh, Will be a long time before we ever see a guy like Red again. He was truly a great friend, a great friend of Elliot Lakes, and a great friend of mine. Red is the type of guy that you'll never forget and you will miss, but his memory will inspire you to continue the work that he believed in, which was this community of Elliot Lake, which became his adopted home. And he believed in, in the community, in its people. And that will always be paramount in my thought whenever I'm working hard for the betterment of Elliott Lake. I will always remember Red. He'll be appreciating it and he'll be saying to me, we're turning the corner, boy. We're almost there. Hey, Red, I wish there were more people in the, uh, the world like you. The world would be a lot better place and uh, I know I've learned so much from you. And I wish I could be as a, much of a gentleman and a United Nations uh, fence builder as you were. And I'm always trying. Every time I come into a situation, I think of those, those, those hard situations where you brought everybody together and melted together. You're the man, Red. You're the man. Red will definitely go down in the history books as somebody who really did make a difference. He worked hard to make sure Elliott Lake was a better community to live in. He was passionate for anything he did. And the first time I met him, many years ago, I'll never forget how likable he was. His sense of humor was always there. He lived for the moment. This salt-of-the-earth, caring and genuine guy would do anything for you at the drop of a hat. Individuals like Red Briffitt don't come around very often. There's no question the mold was broken after you were made. We will all miss you, Red, through your tireless efforts to make this a better world to live in. Are you up to this or not? I think I can handle it, Red. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, with a name like Red, I knew you could catch fish eventually. What do you think? Well, his lips remind me a little bit of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much weight have you got on? Oh, I'd say about 50 pounds less than you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. <laughs>